how did you get to the Ampex Museum? What was what was the history? How did you get that job? Well, this is this is a dull story. You really want me to tell? Yeah. It? Was a, uh, a, a a singer in New York. He had, he had sung with Robert Shaw, Corral, and so on, and uh, with ABC Radio in uh, 1948 and 49. And again, television just coming in. Hey, you can get a gig in television, and the money's good. Uh, so the Dumont Television Network was running what uh, my father describes as a really terrible show called Holiday Hotel with Edward Everett Horton. And uh, Hort it was, he said it was the premise was really simple. Uh, Horton would be this, you know, the uptight Everett Everett Horton character who would be, the, he was the man nervous manager of this hotel and all these crazy people would come into the situation comedy who would come in, but they had these uh, these eight singers, uh, two sopranos, two altos, two basses, uh, two tenors, two basses. My dad was a tenor. And they'd be randomly sitting around and all of a sudden they would burst <laughs> into song uh, <laughs> together. Where the hell did they come from? And the show lasted, I think, for, for about a week. Uh, and I think I think it was in, uh, I think it may even be on IMDb, uh, but uh, very short run. But that was his introduction to television. Uh, it was the year after I was born. But then in uh, Dumont became ABC, and in, in, 50, in uh, the fall of 53, NBC had jettisoned the Voice of Firestone show. Mrs. Harvey Firestone had many years earlier on radio got Harvey her Harvey Firestone her husband to sponsor this show and she loved classical music she herself was quite a talented pianist and uh, and so for years the voice of Firestone ran on on radio and then uh, NBC picked it up in 49 on television uh, ran with it until pretty soon it would became it, th this thing would barely make it on PBS today <laughs> you know uh, I mean very high highbrow I remember the name kind of thing yeah. and uh, but ABC he was just, you know, uh, it was a Leonard Goldenson. Is he, did he find? Did he found that? He was the. He, yes. You know, they, 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 the, Dumont sold all of his, all, everything to, to them, and they, ABC then created their television network. So they were ready for anything, and they, they took on, they took on Voice of Firestone, which ran on ABC from the fall of '53 until oh gosh, 1960, something like that. It was a really popular show, especially among the uh, little older set and so on. People in those days, people appreciated good music. So my father was was one of the regulars on there. This time it wasn't in a in a in a, a, a silly hotel lobby. It was very many, many different things, and you can get those now. I've got a bunch on DVD. It's, it's a little weird to see him there. And and this, by the way, is is, is the ultimate proof that talent skips generations. Uh, <laughs> I can sing, but you don't want to hear it. So. We grew up with, and then he always had church gigs and so on, always on the side. And, Where were you and living at the time? This is this is New Jersey. We were he would commute into Manhattan, uh, but I remember in at, at the age of six, they, they took us into the ABC studios, all those TK10 cameras and 639s and 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 77s, and by that time I was already smitten with electronics. I just knew this was great, and the old man knew nothing about it, so that was good. Care. Yeah, he didn't care. He was he wanted to sing, you know, and and I was just oh. You know, just and uh, I said that's it, and uh, and so in our house, uh, and the Ampex uh, the VR 1000s that ABC bought were put online. Very interesting. Uh, the show was live, and he said live television was so exciting and so energizing. And man, you were out there. And he said one time, I mean, if you screwed up, you were out. You know, that was it. And he said they, they were doing a dance number, and uh, uh, and, and the, it was on a riser, and the the uh, TK-10 was pedestaled up like this to get them. They were supposed to you know, dance, 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 and then go down two stairs, there were three stairs to get off the riser. And it, my father was extremely well coordinated, uh, but and everybody makes mistakes. He tripped on the third step and did a very, I hear, a very graceful gainer under the camera. Nobody saw it. <laughs> and that's how we got away with it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, but in any case, um, uh, especially in audio. I mean, I was I was uh, I was um, five years old when I saw my first Ampex Model 600 at the church up in the booth. And the other thing I've discovered was the booth. I love the booth. <laughs> and he was you know, all these people down on stage, and who wants to be down there and making a fool of yourself? You can be in the booth with power and 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 everything. Control. Yeah, you can control and, and machines and Darson vault and meters with Darson vault uh, movements that. That, that did that, 
you know, and then motors and wow. So that was my childhood, and I was, you know, then right, right away became, you know, the AV guy and, and junior high and all that crap. You too. Oh yes, yes, still do it. I still do it. Yes, um, and uh, and and so um, then I, I after college went into uh, public radio uh, and, and more Ampex recorders, and I remember doing a, a in '75. I think it was I think it was it was 10 feet of snow outside, and this is in Northern Michigan at WIA FM, and I was I was editing on a, on a good old Editol, invented by Joel, Joel Tall, was why it's called the Editol. Yes, he was a great guy by the way. I, I interviewed him, and uh, edited, you know looking out the snow and looking down Ampex, Redwood City, California. And I just finally just went, Bad, I'm, I'm going there, I'm going to work there, it's in California. That's the end of that. So then a little grad school in between and then finally it was one day we packed a car and so we're on our way out to get jobs at Ampex. We did. My, my wife Lucia uh, got the first job. She her, her thing is international education and international relations and everything. But she got the first job at Ampex uh, International uh, Operations, AIO. And, uh, and then she went to the new employee or, orientation. I was, I had not gotten in then and heard one of Ampex's uh, uh, pioneering uh, engineers, Harold Lindsay, Harold W. Lindsay, uh, uh, d tell the story of the founding of the company and so on, about the story about Jack Mullen, the Germans and everything. She came home, Lucia's a wonderful student, and she had taken uh, a dozen pages of notes, gave me Harold's lecture. I got very excited. I went down later on to talk to Harold and said, have you thought about putting this on videotape? And he said, well, that, that, that's all fine and good, but we've been thinking more about a museum here. And uh, and I, it turns out that they had made several attempts at a museum, and I had had some museum experience uh, while in, in grad school with the with the county museum, Monroe County, uh, Indiana Museum, Bloomington, and um, uh, so I. Be, we, Harold and I began to cook up this scheme, and it was great because they'd originally said, well, "We'll put it in the corner of the cafeteria," and and Harold called up and sorry you missed him. Art Hausman was here, you know, the the CEO before. Yeah, the, so so it just uh, um, we we uh, Lucia recited Harold's thing. Harold and I worked on this. I went to Art Hausman and others, and um, uh, uh, Charlie Steinberg was a great supporter of it. Uh, uh, Ridley Rind uh, and Jay Clark, who was really all those guys. Were were in fact when Jake uh, arrived as the new PR director, he received a note. There was a note sitting on his desk from Ridley saying, "Do something about a museum." That was on his desk, and I come in there like two weeks later with, a package. with this idea and with a, with the thing I've been talking to Harold about. And I figured I'd written something up, typed it up, and uh, and it was sort of like, "Oh, okay, yeah, boom." And so then that got it going. That was 1979. Um, I worked for on this for nothing uh, from the falls from fall 79 through April of 80.